Welcome to Track Attack. Today we decided to bring back a former guest. We brought the C8 Corvette back out and this time it has the GM track recommended alignment and has a fresh set of tires on it. Therefore, it should produce a much better lap time than last time. We'll have to see how it does today in these less than ideal conditions. But with that being said, we decided to bring out a bigger and tougher contender. So let's see how it does against the McLaren 650S. This is Track Attack. On a dreary day like this, sometimes you may not want to go to the track and slide around in the rain and put down really slow lap times, but when you're in this car, you do. And the reason I say that is because a McLaren delivers a very unique driving experience. I always talk about how much I enjoy driving something like a Lotus or how special the Alfa Romeo 4C is. They're very unique driving experiences because they're so low weight. feel everything in the road, everything is transmitted through the car. It's a very different experience than any other car can provide. I find the McLaren feels just like a bigger version of those cars. Obviously you feel a little more weight in this car than you do those ones, but it's the way this car communicates to you. Now this 650S, of course, isn't an all new model. This is just really a evolution of the McLaren MP412C which when you think about it, is kind of an old car. That car came out back in 2011. So if this is really just an evolution of the MP412C, that kind of makes this a bit of an old car, doesn't it? So if that is true then, does that mean that this car is kind of obsolete in the world of supercars and maybe it's a bit outdated? No, not at all. This supercar is awesome and by no means outdated and still will hang with the best of them. Of course, it does share most of the old components of the MP412C. In fact, this still has about 75% of the same parts that car does. So not a ton of difference. But what it does have is 25% new stuff in it. One of the changes they did, of course, with the McLaren engineers, they decided to engineer this car to be a bit more responsive and a bit more driver focused. Now in doing so, they also bumped the horsepower up by about 50 horsepower, and they did so by doing some modifications to the old engine. So it's not a complete departure from what it was, it's just they sort of improved upon it. The 75% that this car shares from the old one is not necessarily a bad thing because those parts are still really good parts. Let's start with the chassis. This thing, of course, has the carbon tub chassis. It's really cool when you open the doors, you can see the exposed chassis. It really has that race car, you know, exotic car feel to it. Another thing, of course, that was shared from the previous model is the powertrain. So it comes with the 3.8 liter twin turbo V8. And what a V8, wow. One of the things that I really, really like about the engine in this car is the fact that it uses modern turbo technology, meaning you get the great power band, it makes torque down low. There's actually really good throttle response to this engine, even considering it's turbocharged. But the thing I really like about it is the character it still has. Most modern turbo engines, you don't really get a lot of character in them. It kind of saps the soul out of it. it. Gives great performance, but takes the character out. Now this engine though is different. It sounds really good from the exhaust note. It has a growl to it. 
It obviously makes great power everywhere because the turbos, but the really neat thing is that everywhere part. It goes all the way up to 8,500 RPM. Now to find a turbo engine that does that is pretty hard to find these days, but this car does it. It's so cool. So it kind of gives you that really high RPM screaming race car engine experience, but does so with the performance of modern turbos. Like that is just so cool. Now, one of the best things it shares with the old car as well is the suspension. This car comes equipped with McLaren's dynamic chassis control system. So in a nutshell, the way that works and why it's so cool is that it has dampers on either side of the car and they are connected hydraulically. So by using all the fun science behind that, it basically does not require an anti-roll bar to prevent the car from rolling through the corners and getting the body roll. The suspension in this car is quite good on track when you're pushing it. But I also like the steering feedback. That also kind of ties in with that whole Lotus Alpha experience I'm talking about. You can really feel the road under you through the steering wheel. And let's face it, that's a really big part of the driving experience. You obviously want to, to feel the road under, you want to feel what the car's doing, and the steering is obviously one of the biggest components of that. So in this case, it's great that you can do that with this car. McLaren did a really good job at making this a real driver's car, a true driving experience. And let's face it, really who better to do that than McLaren? Because they started off as a race car company. They, they built and they raced race cars. They didn't do road cars, of course, until the McLaren F1 came out. And let's face it, when that car came out, it broke records and did amazing things for obvious reasons, because it was designed and built by McLaren. This car feels the same. It's not quite as world shattering as the F1 was at the time, but again, this thing is still a top tier supercar. It performs better than most supercars out there, and that's considering it's still not exactly brand new. This car makes about 650 horsepower, weighs in around 3,000 pounds-ish, give or take. But all said and done, that makes for some incredible straight line performance. And as we know, there's something voodoo black magic in the way the McLarens put the power down. They just put the power down so much better than most other cars, which makes the really cool part, not only do you have the performance, but you can really utilize it. Another really cool exotic car supercar feature this McLaren possesses is the active aero. It's really, really cool seeing the rear wing do its thing. When you're under full throttle, the wing goes flat, of course, to reduce drag, give you more acceleration. But then it's really cool that when you brake really, really hard, so let me demonstrate, how the rear wing pops up in the back. It's so neat because you're looking in the mirror, you actually have really good visibility, which is surprising for a two-seat mid-engine car. And then you hit the brakes really hard, you look in your mirror, and all you see is yellow. This giant wing pops up and blocks your view. But it's so cool because it creates an air brake, so a little more drag, slows you down better, helps the brakes, but really keeps the rear end stable under really heavy braking loads. So it makes for a better braking zone, keeps the car stable, and then that way you can really set up the corner better. Another neat thing it does is at really high speeds, if you kind of let off the throttle a bit, the wing goes up a little bit just to provide a little bit of downforce, help keep the back end stable. So that way you're not gonna get any sort of uh, throttle off oversteer or anything like that with the car. So it's really neat how McLaren engineered the aerodynamics to work with the driver in terms of the inputs and also the current situation with the car. Again, no surprise from race car engineers. Now with all this being said, the big question is, is this still enough to beat the Corvette? Because let's face it, last time we had the Lamborghini Huracan out and that thing had about 600 horsepower, weighed about the same issue as the McLaren. So power to weight wasn't too far off this car. And again, it has great suspension, great chassis and all that. And yet the Corvette still managed to beat it. Yes, I know that was due to the brakes failing on the Lambo because it needed fresh fluid, but nonetheless, the Corvette still beat it and put down a very impressive time. Now with the Corvette having better tires and a much better track alignment, that should bump it up from where it was before. So does the McLaren have enough to beat the Chevy Corvette? We're gonna find out today.
So now we're here at the C8 Corvette again. Question is, why did we bring it back when it performed so well the first time? Well, that's just it. It did so well on street alignment with the factory tires. And again, it blew our socks off. It did really well. It took down the supercar we put it up against. Uh, the Lamborghini was a heck of a car and the Corvette actually beat it. So the Corvette definitely got the win there. But here's the thing, GM has a really good track alignment that they recommend you put on the car if you're gonna bring it to the track and really sort of take the performance out of the car. So we decided to do the track alignment and bring it back out and see how it does. And of course today we had to put it up against a bigger contender, thus the McLaren 650S. The question is though, does doing the GM recommended track alignment actually make that much difference to the car for the track? The short answer is yes, absolutely it does. The stock alignment on this for the street GM usually sets up at about minus 0.5 degrees on the front and rear. Now for the track alignment, we have it set up at minus three in the front and minus 2.5 in the rear. So that should make a big change in how the car handles through the corners. We're gonna find out very soon once we put it through the performance test. I can't wait to try it out and see what it's about. As well as the alignment, we also decided to throw a fresh set of rubber on this car to see if that's gonna help it with the performance times. And to talk about the rubber today, we actually have David Pula from Yokohama here with us. David, come on in. Kong, thank you for having me. Hey, thanks for coming out, man. So we have a set of brand new Yokohama tires on this Corvette. Do you want to give us a brief description of what tires we have on here and why we have them on here, maybe? Definitely. So we're running the all new Yokohama Advan Apex V601. Mm -hmm. Newly launched into our high performance lineup is now the seventh tire offered in our Advan lineup. Cool. And now, correct me if I'm wrong, I know this is supposed to be like a really high performance street tire for you guys, correct? Not meant to be like a hardcore track tire, not like for the, the hardcore guy looking for ultimate lap times. Um, it is a street tire. However, with that being said, it is still engineered to be very sporty and, and deliver excellent performance under you know various sort of summer conditions and still a good track tire to go out and, and still have fun and will still perform very well. It is. It excellent. Is correct. Good. So, so I, I do know what I'm talking about. That's good. Definitely. That's good we, what, we, what we're looking for out of the Advan Apex is um, you know, like you said, where passionate performers that have their vehicles as their daily drivers that can drive to the track, but can also push their vehicle to the limits while they're on the track, so. Nice. I know just looking at the tires this morning, visually, it's interesting because you'll notice that you guys have that very big uh, central rib down the center, so it increases right. high speed stability. Correct. So I noticed you guys have that in there. Um, I noticed right on the side of the tire too, you get a very strong, uh, large block shoulder. I know that really helps increase cornering ability and keeps a very um, responsive steering because you don't get that, sure. that squirm from the tread block. Exactly. Yeah. So you kind of visually just look at the tire. It looks like a pretty high performance tire. It does. So you wouldn't expect it to be a really good performing tire on the road in terms of like, you know, the quietness and the comfort. And the everyday driving. Yeah. So I found that really interesting just putting around the track and, and, and you know, noticing how quiet and how nice of a tire it was given the performance elements you guys have, you know, put in this tire. Now the other thing when I was reading about this tire too, you guys also designed something in, in the uh, the tread pattern and the rib blocks about heat dissipation. For sure. um, do you want to tell me a bit about that? I found that really interesting. Definitely. So the heat dissipation, so it's actual circ circumferential groove, which is going to help dissipate the heat. So that's derived from all of our motorsports lineup. Mm -hmm. So um, it's uh, it announced on the AO52, now on the Advan Apex. So what that's going to do, uh, and similar to how you commented on the stability of the vehicle with the alignment that was done, when on, on across circuit or doing hot laps the vehicle is tending to shift on the outer edges of the tire mm -hmm. which is going to create a lot of heat towards the outer edges so what that circumferential groove is going to do is going to help dissipate some of the heat it's going to help the vehicle maintain the majority of the contact patch on the road where you need it interesting so essentially you guys designed the tire so we'll kind of dissipate the heat even more so in the outer edge versus I guess the whole tire since exactly. that's kind of the part used the most in corners. Exactly. So thanks so much for coming out today David and of course as always thank you so much for supplying us with these great set of tires today. I'm really anxious to test them out and see what they're going to do and of course thank you so much for you know sharing your insight and your knowledge with us and of course everybody out there gets to learn a bit more about these awesome tires and maybe why they should have them on their car and obviously why it's going to help them in all sorts of driving conditions. So thanks so much David really appreciate it. Track Attack Canada, Colin, thank you for having. Absolutely. Let's see you put these things to the test. Yes, sir, will do. So we'll end up here in the McLaren. We're gonna go out and see what kind of autocross time we can do in this car. Now, I know the Corvette has the better tires. It also has the better alignment. The alignment's gonna make the big difference, especially with something like this being a mid-engine car at lower speeds. That front end bite is gonna be a lot better in the Corvette than the McLaren. 
But the McLaren, I still believe, is a little more nimble. It's obviously a heck of a lot lighter, slightly smaller dimensions, which will help it in the autocross course being very tight as well. So it really could go either way. And let's face, there's really not much of a power advantage either way since we're in the wet conditions. So let's uh, have some fun with these cars in the wet and see what they'll do. Three, two, one, go! Okay, really trying to get some traction off the line here. Okay, whoa, it's a bit slippery. Oh boy, it's slick. Whoa. Okay, you really got to be smooth through the slalom here, especially in wet conditions like this. Especially when you're driving a car with this much power. Okay, gotta make the front end bite. Okay, smooth, 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 Colin. There's not much grip out here. Okay, uh, get it turned in. Okay, this is really low speed. Front end doesn't want to bite. Okay, patient with the throttle on the exits. Not bad, not bad. Okay, let's get it through here nice and tidy. Okay, slow down for the slalom. Okay, nice and smooth through here. Make sure you keep the balance of the car in check. Okay. Okay, brake before the last thing here. And off we go. Woo! It is slippery out there. And now we're in the C8 Corvette. Really anxious to see what the new alignment's gonna do. I really have high hopes for it. I'm sure the front end is gonna bite a lot better. Uh, I'm hoping it's going to be more rotating, and uh, these tires, I'm really hoping these will have some good grip in the wet here. I know I have driven on a set of Yoko's before, uh, this particular tire on a Civic Type R in the wet, and they were quite good. This is a different car and different size tires, so we'll see how that plays out. But I have high hopes for the Corvette. I'm assuming the alignment is going to make it quicker, especially in the wet. It should make the car turn in better, should make it a little more predictable. So uh, my predictions on the Corvette winning, and let's see if I can make it happen. Three, two, one, go! Ooh, it's tricky getting this thing off the line, a lot of torque. Okay, ooh, front end is good, wow! Holy cow, oh my goodness, through the slalom, there's so much bite. Oh, the car rotates nice, wow! What a difference in the alignment already. Oh, I like this thing, Woo! Oh, that turn in's good. Okay, let's keep it tidy through here. Oops, slippery. Okay, let's slick through here. Okay, front end's doing good, responding well. I like this, I like this. Okay, through the loop, it's got some bite. All right, uh, here we go, not too much throttle. Okay, nice. Wow, I like this alignment. Okay, uh, keep it tidy, okay, smooth through here. The alignment it's actually even easier to be smoother with the car it just responds to the inputs a little better more predictably okay let's get through here now nice and clean into the box So we really got to see the difference the alignment made in the Corvette. Out on the autocross course, it really showed the difference. I have to say, the front end bite was dramatically better, but the best part was the rotation on the car. It just rotates so much better than it did in stock form. And it's not that it really didn't rotate, it just does it so much better now. But it still does it very predictably. It's not scary, it wasn't uncontrollable, even though we had that wet slick surface. So that new alignment made a big difference. It was awesome. It really brought the Corvette out of its shell and really made it just awesome in terms of handling. Now that being said, the McLaren did very well as well. It's a McLaren, it, it turned in well, it rotated, it was balanced, it has top tier suspension. It was awesome. I think the other big element was the tires. The P0s on the McLaren, 
just didn't quite have the same bite as the Yokohamas did in the wet. So I think that definitely gave a bit more edge in the Corvette too. So all said and done, the Corvette definitely won the autocross by a second and change. That is quite a stark difference when you have a short autocross course. So the Corvette clearly had the better time and performed better in autocross. Now when we get to the drag race, slightly different results there. Of course, the McLaren has the power to weight advantage by quite a margin, and that clearly showed in the race, as you can see. So that was no surprise there, and McLaren got the win there. So now that we've seen the results from the autocross and the drag race, the true test is the hot laps. Even though today they're not going to be very hot with these conditions, but still, we have to see if the new alignment and the tires in the Corvette can let it keep up to the McLaren. Let's go to the hot laps, and let's find out. So at the end of our fun but cold and damp day, we have come to one inevitable conclusion. The Corvette is a phenomenal sports car. We've already proven that. I think we proved it again today that bang for the buck, it's one of the best things out there, bar none. However, it still cannot keep up to a real King of the Hill supercar like the 650S. Now, saying that, of course, isn't a bad thing towards the Corvette, considering the McLaren costs substantially more than a Corvette. Again, came out with the new alignment today, got some new rubber, not ideal conditions today. Got to say, when the track was really wet, we had some good grip with the new Yokohama tires, without a doubt. I would say, once the track started drying up a little bit, <clears throat> and we could uh, get some dry pavement, the tires were probably just as grippy in the cold as the P0s were on the McLaren. So, again, great job on the tires, they did great. The alignment, though, absolutely changed the characteristic of the Corvette. The turn-in was night and day, it was so much better. Mid-corner understeer was completely gone, and the back end would really rotate, rotate so naturally, very predictably and safe, in fact, and uh, it was way better through the corners, without a doubt. So the alignment definitely improved upon the Corvette's performance. However, it still was not enough to keep up to the McLaren. And I'm pretty sure, without looking at the data yet, that the McLaren made up most of that time in the straightaways. 
The McLaren is just a completely different animal in the straightaways than the Corvette. Corvette's a very fast car. McLaren is just a completely other level in the straightaways. But I have to say, the McLaren, even on the street alignment, still had just absolute phenomenal cornering abilities. So I can only imagine what that would be like with a proper track alignment. So conclusion at the end of the day, I still love the McLaren. I would still buy one if I could afford one. But the Corvette still is king of the hill when it comes to bang of the buck. Bar none. End of argument. So stay tuned for our next episode because we have some really exciting Japanese versus American battles going to be happening. So be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the exciting content. And we'll see you next time. See you at the track.